Here's 20 tips I think you should know when using high paint. When creating a new canvas, you can see how many layers your device will give you based on the canvas size. And if you go to custom and you change that to something completely different, you'll be able to see the change in the layer count there on the right hand side. And as you add more and more zeros and make your canvas larger, your layer count will typically reduce. Once in a new canvas, you're going to want to go up to the three dots and go to the option here of correction. That is your stabilization. And if you keep it down to zero and you start to draw something, you'll get lots of natural tremors in there. But if you want to boost up the correction and you go for that again, notice how it takes a little bit of time to catch up because it's eliminating all of those tremors, keeping your lines a lot more smooth in comparison to with none. And you can change this whenever you like. It does work on a global level, so it affects every single brush when you have a percentage set. Another setting you can utilize is if you go up to the three dots in the top right and we go ahead and go to the option of sketch settings. At the bottom here, if we go to gesture functions, you can go ahead and adjust the two finger and three finger functions, though I don't recommend you do that. But more importantly, you can change down here the finger press and hold and also the pen long press function. You can tap on here and change it from color picker to disabled or otherwise a quick layer selection. In high paint, you can have multiple reference windows. If you tap on the plus icon and go to the option of reference, it will then give you this window here and you can tap to add a new image. Once you add an image in there, you can scale this up and down. You can pinch to zoom in. You can also go ahead and hold down on the image to select a color. And as I mentioned, you can go up to the plus here again and repeat. You can go to reference, you get another new window which you can then move around. You can then add a new photo in here. And just like before, you can scale this up and down, you can pinch to zoom. And when you're done, you can just hit the cross icons in the top right to get rid of. If you go to your color option here and notice how every time I tap away to then start drawing, it then disappears. What you can do is you can go up to the color and you can tap on the bar here. If you tap on that, you get a nice floating window, which then allows you to be able to jump between your colors of your canvas and your palette potentially nice and easily without having to go back into the menu. Following on from our previous point, you can actually go to your brush as well. And again, notice how every time I change brush, it then disappears. If you hit this icon here for the pin, that will now stay on the screen. So I can quickly switch between my brushes if I'm in a particular design that requires that. This also goes for your smudge tools and your blur tool. You can tap here, you can tap on the pin and keep your blur tool there on the screen at all times. Tap on the pin to get rid of. And likewise, for the smudge, you also have the pin as well. And you can even do this for your eraser where you can tap on the pin as well. And it works in exactly the same fashion. Your toolbar across the top here can actually be customized. If you go to the three dots here and you go ahead and scroll down on the first tab here to toolbar settings, you can actually go ahead and pick and choose different tools that you want to add to the toolbar. So you can customize your experience of high paint based on the tools that you use most often. When you're in a design and you go up to your layers, you can actually merge layers with the one below it. So if I tap on this sun here, for example, I can tap on it and then I can get the option here to go to merge, which merges it with the layer that sits underneath. So you can tap on that and it merges those into one layer. However, if you want to merge your entire design, it doesn't matter where you press, you can just tap on any layer and you can go to the option of merge all and then that will merge every single layer of your design onto one layer for you. Another tip for your layers is if you go ahead and open up a canvas with a bunch of layers, keeping things organized with groups is the best way that you can make this a lot more easy to manage. If you go up to the very top here, for example, and I create a new group, I can then go ahead and grab the layers here for this sort of dark area at the very front, and drag them into this group allowing me to then hit this icon here to collapse the group, allowing my layers panel to not be quite so long and nice and organized. You can also go ahead and tap on a group. You can tap on its name here and you can rename it. Again, making sure that your groups and your layers are just nice and organized. Once you're done with a piece of work, you can then go up to the three dots in the top right. If you go to the option here of time-lapse replay, if you tap on that, you will then get a time-lapse of how your work came about and how you made your way from start to finish. You can see the duration across the bottom and you can pause and rewind as you wish. But if you want to, you can share this time lapse to your socials as well. You can hit the share icon in the top right. You can pick an export time of six seconds or you can go ahead and specify that otherwise. When you're done with your canvas and you want to share it as an image, you can go up to the three dots again and go to the share tab here and you can pick either a JPEG or a PNG. A JPEG is the whole image has to have color in it and a PNG you would share if you had transparent areas. With your brushes, if you're using a particular brush, let's grab a random one, let's grab the watercolor brush under painting 
and then you want to go ahead and use that same brush in your smudge tool or your blur tool if you hold down on the option here you'll get a little message underneath that allows you now to use the same brush that you were using under the brush tab so now if i tap on the brush here for the blur you can see it's using the watercolor and you can go back to your brush you can hold down on your eraser repeat you can go back to your brush and you can hold down on smudge and repeat. It's all based off of your brush that you're currently using. When using a particular brush, if there's a certain couple of sizes that you want to remember for later on, if you go over here to your slider, you can see if you tap on this icon, you get a little plus icon. So if I drag this up to say around about the 300 mark and I tap on the plus, it's now created a memory of that size. So if I drag this down now and I drag it down to 36 and hit the plus, I've now got the two sizes that I just saved allowing me to quickly jump to those specific sizes if that's something that you need for your canvas. And then when you're done with them, you can just hold down on them and they disappear after a second or two. And then you can hit this cross to get rid of this menu. In the very bottom left of your canvas, you'll spot this little touch key and that's what it's referred to as. And when you tap on it, you can customize what this actually does. So if we go up to the three dots again and we go to the settings here and we go to sketch settings, if you scroll down to touch key, you can then go ahead and tap on this and change it to color picker, radial menu, switch to the previous color, brush and eraser, or you can just disable it fully. Now my touch key is set up to my radial menu, meaning if I tap this, I then get this option here. And under each one of these sections here, there are quick actions. So they have a bunch of different tools around the outside. And if you go to an empty one, for example, you can just hold down on it and pick a new action. So if you can't find something that's deep in the menu potentially, maybe you wanna add it here your touch key in the bottom left, if it's set to the radial menu, also has this amazing option. If you tap in the middle, you can then get a bunch of different palettes and you can rotate this round if you need to pull some closer towards you. You can tap on a color and then you can get working with that color. And again, you can tap on that middle node there and you can go ahead and then grab more and more colors to then work on your canvas with. If you need to, you can go up to the three dots in the top right and you can then go to the first tab there and go to the option of canvas size. Canvas size allows you to afterwards, if you made it a little bit too narrow or too wide, etc., you can go ahead and change the canvas size accordingly. Of course, just like we mentioned at the very beginning, the smaller you make this, the more layers you'll have. And if you make it too big, you're going to run out of layers potentially. And you can hit the tick when you're done. Stepping out into the gallery now, you can actually go ahead and hit the plus icon at the bottom here and create folders for all of your work. So you can create a new folder. You can go ahead and hold down on a particular canvas that you want to move. And if you grab the move tool here, you can go ahead and tap on here and drop it into a folder that you've created. And all of these are called unnamed, but I could drop it into a folder and hit OK. And you can now see how that's moved into there. With each canvas that you create and you hit the save icon when you're inside of a canvas, i.e. this icon here, when you step back out into your gallery, you can hold down on a canvas here and go to this option here of restore archive. If you tap on this, you'll then be able to scroll back through all the different sort of save points of your design in case you went down an avenue and you want to revert back. You can just do this here and it will override where it currently sits. If you've just deleted a canvas and you want to retrieve it, if you go to your icon down here for your settings and account, you can actually go to the recycling bin here. And if you tap on that, you'll be able to see some of the canvases that you've previously created and you can hit the tick here and then you can go to the option of recover. And that will then push that back into your main gallery. And if you hit OK and you step back out, your artwork will be added back in. And a final little bonus tip, you can actually go ahead and hold down on a canvas here and go to the option of favorite. And when you tap on there and then hit the back icon to complete that, you'll get a little star in the bottom right. And if you then see up here in the top left, You've got your full gallery or you can switch to just your favorites. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you are new to high paint and you want a tutorial to follow, you can actually create this sunset design. It's perfect for beginners and I'll leave a link to it on screen right now. If you found this video helpful, drop a like on the video and a comment down below. And you'll also be able to find a playlist on screen now of all of my high paint content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.